Hello, in this video we will examine the human joint design. One method of classifying the joints focuses primarily on their movement potential. So, based on that, we have two general categories – synarthrodial and diarthrodial joints. Arthrodial joints possess articulation which allows slight to essentially no movement. Diathodial joints possess articulation that allows moderate to extensive motion. These joints contain a joint cavity, and we will examine more characteristics in just a moment. Let's take a look at synarthrodial joints first. There are two types, fibrous and cartilaginous. Fibrous joints are stabilized by dense connective tissue usually with a high concentration of collagen. The three examples of fibrous joints are the skull sutures, radio ulnar joint, often referred to as syndesmosis, a joint stabilized by an interosseous membrane, and gomphosis, a joint anchoring the tooth to its socket. Now, the cartilaginous joints. They're composed of flexible fibrocartilage mixed with collagen. Usually, they exist in the midline of the body. Examples of cartilaginous joints are symphysis pubis, interbody joints of the spine, and manubriosternal joint. Now, let's take a look at the joints that allow the most mobility in the human body, the diathrodial joints. Diathrodial joints are also referred to as synovial joints because they possess a synovial cavity. But it's not their only feature. The diathrodial joints always exhibit the following seven elements. Joint capsule, ligaments, synovial fluid, articular cartilage, synovial membrane, blood vessels, and sensory nerves. Diathrodial joints are classified according to the number of axes around which the motion occurs. So let's take a look at different classifications of the diathrodial joints. There are uniaxial, biaxial, and triaxial diathrodial joints. Let's take a look at uniaxial joints first. They possess one axis of rotation and move in one plane of motion. They are classified into hinge and pivot joints. An example of a hinge joint is humeral ulnar joint. Hinge joints are the union of a convex and concave surface. These joints typically move in a sagittal plane. The motion allowed are flexion and extension. An example of a pivot joint is a humeral radial joint. Pivot joints is a union of a convex pin parallel with the longitudinal axis of another bone. The motions allowed here are the pronation and supination movements around the transverse plane. Now, let's take a look at the biaxial joints. They possess two axes of rotation and move in two cardinal planes. There are three subdivisions, condyloid, ellipsoid, and saddle joints. The examples of condyloid joints are the metacarpophalangeal joints in the hand. It is a union of oval convex surface with a shallow concave con cavity. The motions allowed are flexion and extension in the sagittal plane and abduction-adduction in the frontal plane. An example of ellipsoid joint is the radiocarpal joint. It is a union of an elongated convex surface with elongated concave elliptical cavity. The motions allowed are flexion and extension in the sagittal plane and abduction-adduction in the frontal plane. An example of a saddle joint is the carpometacarpal joint of the thumb. It is a union of two saddle-shaped bones, both of which are concave and convex, oriented perpendicular to one another. The motions occurring are the flexion extension in the frontal plane and abduction adduction in the sagittal plane. And last but not least, are the triaxial joints, also known as multiaxial. The two subclassifications here are the planar joints and ball and socket joints. An example of a planar joint is the intercarpal joint. They're typically small joints with irregular plane surfaces and tight articular capsule. 
The joint allows a gliding motion between two or more bones. An example of ball and socket joint is a glenohumeral joint. Ball and socket joints move around three axes of rotation in three cardinal planes. It is a union of a convex ball to a concave cup. The motions allowed a flexion and extension in the sagittal plane, abduction adduction in the frontal plane, and internal external rotation in the transverse plane. Now, let's do a little quiz. Take a look at the following images. Can you classify these joints? Try your best. And once you're finished, you can check the answers under the description of this video. I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, give it a like and subscribe.